Welcome to NTN Nightly, I am Janelle Novel. This edition's top stories. CARICOM makes a strong case for assistance as the region reopens. St. Lucians are urged to engage in water conservation and a reminder that vector-borne diseases are still a threat amid the COVID-19. The lobbying efforts of St. Lucia's Prime Minister to affect how the international lending community interfaces with small and developing states is being continued by the current chair of CARICOM, Barbados's Prime Minister, Honorable Mia Motley. Honorable Alan Shasney has been painstakingly calling for a different approach to the lending criteria for small states like St. Lucia because of their vulnerability. At the first virtual assembly of the World Health Organization, Chair of CARICOM Honorable Mia Motley insisted on inclusion of small states in access to procured services and goods to fight COVID-19, particularly rapid testing equipment, in order to avert economic collapse. And if we are asking for the same solution for climate, for external shocks, as we are asking for the pandemic, it is because all three destroy our capacity to produce as nations and the ability of our people to survive. It is against this background, my friends, that equitable access and fair allocation of resources will allow our small states, particularly middle-income ones, dependent on travel, to be able to have access to increased supplies for testing, such that we can reopen our societies safely to intra-regional travel and thereafter the extra regional travel. But it will also better allow us to ensure that there is a return to safe work by safe people, the least vulnerable people to COVID-19 in our countries. While we can tolerate high unemployment and severe contraction of our economies for two to three months, the consequences to our societies of prolonged shutdown are as equal as the high incidence of COVID among our population. That is why we need urgently to get access to adequate numbers of the appropriate tests, in particular the rapid tests that are affordable and reliable if we are to allow our economies and societies to reopen safely. Prime Minister Motley advocated for the use of measures other than gross domestic product, GDP, to determine eligibility for grant and relief needs for small island states. Even when our circumstances deteriorate, there has been no review that takes into account the inherent vulnerability to which we are exposed and which prevents us from being able to access critical money or goods. In addition, the use of certain proxy criteria to access technologies, medicines, vaccines or concessional funds and grants would exclude vulnerable countries such as ours in the Caribbean, some in Latin America and even in the Pacific. Why? Because we are using criteria that are more relevant to fighting problems that have little or no relevance to our current vulnerabilities and challenges. For example, we are less than two weeks away from the beginning of the hurricane season. Tropical storm Arthur has already formed off of the Bahamas, well in advance of that start. Many of us are already confronting droughts and the presence of sargassum weed as a result of the climate crisis, and it is wreaking havoc in our societies. But none of these challenges are captured by per capita income or by maternal mortality rates. None of them. Chair of CARICOM and Prime Minister of Barbados, Honorable Mia Motley, as she addressed the 73rd World Health Assembly. The National Emergency Management Organization, NEMO, is among local agencies employing the public to conserve water following the declaration of a water emergency. Anisia Antoine reports. As the country continues to face a dry spell, a water-related emergency was declared given the alarmingly low levels of rainfall and water available from Wasco's traditional sources. The legislation prohibits the public from using water obtained through pipes of the Water and Sewage Company, Inc. for activities such as washing vehicles, watering lawns and gardens, or any activity that requires the use of a considerable or excessive quantity of water. 
Jason Ernest, director of the Water Resource Management Agency, gave an update on St. Lucia's current status as it relates to the drought conditions. The outflow from the system was significantly much greater than the inflow into the system. And still, going into April, we had another analysis of the data and it still showed that we would still be receiving uh, less than normal rainfall, mm -hmm. even at the start of the, um, uh, the, wet, um, the wet season. So when some um, case studies were done and in terms of th the current volumes that we have and the demand and what was being abstracted, how long would it last moving into the, into the next uh, few weeks, then the decision was made that uh, we had to issue a, a water-related emergency. So in, in, in a nutshell, it means that person should be going into conservation mode. It's not only WASCO managing um, the, um, uh, the, the, water, the water system or the supplies that they have, but persons actually um, monitoring and managing the supplies that they receive. The director of the Water Resource Management Agency highlighted alternative measures that can be used to conserve water in mitigating the effects of the drought period. The alternative is uh, using water from our tributaries, the streams and the rivers, but those would have to be downstream, downstream. from the Wasco intakes. Now, uh, most of our farming activity is actually downstream of um, the um, Wasco intakes. Uh, we also look at uh, rainwater harvesting yes. as, uh, as an al alternative, and it's not only for farming, but also for uh, on a residential level as well, because, like I mentioned, even in the dry season that... Uh, um, rain falls and a household can capture significant water even on a catchment level it may not make a, a, um, a significant difference but on a household level persons can capture enough water that they can use it to carry out some of the, um, the daily needs for that household. Andrew George, Program Development Officer at the National Emergency Management Organization, NEMO, encouraged individuals to preserve as much water as possible during this period. Through the St. Lucia Development Bank, there is a climate financing facility, uh, it's called CAF, which is the Climate Adaptation Financing Facility, which gives small loans and for persons to purchase tanks uh, and water storage uh, anything to, to, to be able to store water. Also, water harvesting uh, instruments so that you can, you can then harvest rainwater for yourself. So persons can get that, that, that uh, access to, to that. Uh, so for us at the national level, this is all the little pieces that we're trying to put together to ensure that at the end of the day, water is not only conserved, but people have enough water to meet their basic needs so that industry can continue, the economy can continue, and then persons have enough water to keep themselves sanitized and sanitary. The water-related emergency was declared on Thursday, May 14, 2020. From the Government Information Service, I am Anisia Antoine reporting. With the rainy season fast approaching, the Caribbean Public Health Agency, CAFA, is urging individuals to play their part to prevent the spread of vector-borne diseases. CAFA's Head of Vector-Borne Diseases, Dr. Laura Lee Bodram, explained that the public should be conscious of the many vector-borne diseases such as dengue and must take the necessary actions to prevent themselves from getting bitten and becoming ill, especially as health systems the world over remain inundated with the COVID-19 pandemic. During the COVID-19 pandemic, our healthcare systems are dedicating many resources to the prevention and spread of this disease. As the rainy season approaches, there's an increased potential for the spread of mosquito-borne diseases, which will place an additional burden on our healthcare systems. When rain falls, water can accumulate in the base of plant pots, discarded vehicle tires, and any other containers lying around our homes. These will serve as breeding sites for mosquitoes. We urge the public to clean up their surroundings and ensure water storage drums and tanks are properly covered. Other prevention measures such as the use of bed nets, screens on windows and insect repellent will also help. At the 17th special session of the CARICOM Heads of Government on Public Health Threats in November 2014, the Heads approved a proposal for the establishment of an annual Caribbean Mosquito Awareness Week to be observed by member states with the support of CAFA and the CARICOM Secretariat in partnership with PAHO. 
This year's Mosquito Awareness Week was held from the 4th to the 10th of May 2020. Another theme, let's unite to fight the bite. Corporate citizens are continuing to play a partnership role in the national fight against COVID-19. Europa Hardware has launched a campaign that is aimed at rewarding the nation's frontliners. The company made a presentation to the Chief Medical Officer, Dr. Sharon Belmar-George. This thing started when um, our managing director um, asked me to brainstorm along with, uh, with himself to figure out what we could do different than just saying hi in the newspapers and saying thank you to the COVID team that did a sterling job in um, the fight against COVID on behalf of the country. And we, we didn't just want to say thanks. We, so we dug deep and we got 50 machines, vacuum cleaners, pressure washers, um, grass cutters, etc. And we decided to put them up in the form of a lottery so that um, the firefighters, the police officers, the nurses mm -hmm. could um, call into our store and just register themselves with us. And at the end of uh, this month, we would pull up 50 lucky names and those persons would be given those machines free of charge. Let me first of all say thank you so much for um, recognizing the efforts of our frontline workers. It's really a huge um, team. And I must say, in the response to COVID-19, it has really been all hands on board mm -hmm. to manage. Mm -hmm. um, I appreciate the... The thought, um, it's extremely timely, especially since for the last few months, I've had no time for my garden, so it's a mess. So definitely, I think they're very well needed and they will definitely be put to, to good use. Provisions vendors who had been temporarily relocated on Jeremy Street have moved into their new home following construction of the new provisions market. The new provisions market, which is part of the first phase of the Castries Market Redevelopment Project, was handed over to the Castries Constituency Council on May 3, 2020. The new facility is outfitted with 100 stalls that will accommodate all provisions vendors, including those on the sidewalks. Mayor Peterson Francis says the general idea is to have the new provisions market as the go-to for everything. In the coming days, consultation will begin with the Jabati Street tenants to continue the next component of the first phase that encompasses the construction of a container box park with cosmetic shops, cafes, pubs and eateries. And this is NTN Nightly. Up next, Primus Hutchinson with the NTN Nouvelle Aquayol. Be aware of and follow water conservation practices. Here are a few tips to help you save water. Wash dishes in a basin of water instead of a running tap. Soak pots and pans instead of letting the water run while scraping them. Check toilets for leaks by putting dye in the tank. If color shows in the bowl without flushing, there is a leak. A leaking toilet can waste thousands of gallons of water. Use a bucket instead of a hose to wash cars and reuse grey water from laundry to water plants. Water conservation reduces energy consumption and strain on the water distribution system. Conserve water whenever possible. And remember, every drop counts. A message brought to you by the Water and Sewage Company Incorporated, WASCO. Welcome back. We join Primus Hutchinson for the NTN Nouvelle Aquayol. Merci, Hôtel Chanel. Merci, Madame Departement qui n'est pas responsable pour l'information en gouvernement cette ci Ça, c'est GIS. Ça, c'est Télévision Nationale, puis à NTN, à propos de Nouvelle Aquayol. Pour ça, Primus Hutchinson. Gouvernement cette ci j'ai annoncé un approchement des phases pour vivre au vert secteur touristique PIA à de façon de responsabilité commencé le 4e mois de juin 2020. Ce ministre des Affaires touristiques, Honorable Dominique Fede, a révélé façon des approchements à la pour protéger les nations et les étrangers aussi contre la maladie corona. Alors, 
La kaye ni test ki twe avanse de travaye ek les etwajez kaye touve l'examination fe asu yo souvaman pou servi mod de netwayaj kon sanitaiz de wan tout la wout moun na kaye fe an vizitasyon yon an hotel ek pou obzove 6 pie distans sosyal. Si lo, on ewa fede. Premye faz pou vi yo ouve kaye yon seremoni an Eupo Etenasyonal Hewanora pou bienvini les etwajez hot peyi la mewit selma. Moun ki kaye pran se voya sa la, ja touve konsey pou aproche avyo yo pou sav konsene se voyaj la ek se wag la ke a plas. An preparasyon pou se etwajez la ki kaye vizite peyi set nisi, la ja ni yon mil sek san cham hotel a set nisi ki bien prepare pou ve bonè an mwa djen. Kom yo ka aspe pou yon sertifikasyon nouvo de maladi korona. Selon ministre Fede, faz apochman sa la pou vye ouve kaj kontoune pou jis li 31 an mwa djouyet an ozelta di konsultasyon hod yon goup hond li industri turistik pou aji epi maladi korona sa la. Si to jes la kaj ni pou mou twe satifika ki yo pa ka soufe epi maladi korona ki yo te touve teste 40 nedita avan yo te fe popo aso pou voyaje. Le zetwajez sa la, debache, le yo debache an set le si, yo ni pou pote mas a soufija yo, ek weste spye hod yon alot. Se etwajez sa la, kay touve l'examinasyon a sou e po a menm, embe le yo debache a sou la wad kastri. Protokol jen an plas pou chofè tou taksi pou ni tout pou kosyon, ek pou chen distans ek pou le touris osi an se hotel la pou fè asyo ki tout a fè mache sa ne sov. Gouvèdman jan etabli yon satifika de COVID pou tout hotel ek se hotel sa la ni pou ka swiv plis ki yon douzen weg pou yo obzove avan yo pe wisivwe le touris. Kase pou fè asywe proteksyon yo menm le travaye ek set li siye jenwalman. Menez des afè santé onwab Mary Isaac Te kaya vou dwe ki jen fi ki ka an profesyon nos touve ti met pli si po pou sa kondwi travay yo. Ta se pou kondwi primè. Di wè yon diskisyon asou NTN, on yon ap Isaac de ki i distwe ti bwen konsen de fason nos ki pli avanse an profesyon an katwete se jen fi a ki ka apon profesyon. Se lo madame Isaac, se nos la ki ja bien avanse an profesyon an ni pou asiste yo ki ni mwens espeyans, patikleman kom nou an ba menas maladi korona. Mene sote ya ka ple de epi se nos sa la pou konsidewe bon si po pou se jen nos an set le si. Men nou ka di se an manye ou ka ede se moun nan ki ka an twe ya pou yo sa kompren sa ki ne pou fet sa yo si poze fet fe ek pe bagay kon sa. So pa man nou ka ni nos ki ka le lot peyi nou ka y toujou ni nos nef ki ka vini Evek kon nou se yon moun komwen di nou ni yon chay fons, tout manye nou kay fè yon manye pou nou menm sa mette tout bagay alright. Selon minis santé ya, pe ya ja ka aji epi maladi korona ase bien, la se pas ki set isi ka obzove tout protokol ki kay fè moun, ki ja fè moun touve je wizon si telman vit. So ki sa nou ka fè set isi, nou ka follow tout protokol, Nou ka lave lan men ou, jik se ti mamay la, yo ka lave lan men yo, sou wè yo lave lan men yo. Evek yo ka mette mask yo, yo menm kanek, hedi mask yo mette an fiji yo. Mwen ni an ti mamay, lo e nou ka sot do yo, i ka do mami may mask, i pa ka sot do yo san li. Evek nou ka lave lan men, nou ka mette mask nou, evek nou ka social distance. Kon sa wè wè nou wè an moun, menm si nou ti e mask la tizin, kon sa nou wè an moun ka vini, nou ka vi wè mette yi, ek chak moun ni mask yo, asou fiji yo. So se tout se bagay sa la, ki an ka ki nou ka fe, ki fe nou ni bon result actualman. So moun ni pou kontinu wè se bagay sa la. Poche pou vi wè bati chime an la retret, ka y komanse lindi 25 an mwad me 2020, Poje ya ka fet an ba pogwam de zepouvman chimen an set le si katjem faz. Kote a pepre yon mil desan de set met chimen pe ya ka y resouvre atasyon. An pa mi se travay ki ka y fet an ba poje sa la se konstruksyon kanal ek wol mason 
encouragement pour chemin. Les vont transiter travail ça la ka fait en section chemin ka trouver y fermé avec le chauffeur l'auto ka ni pour servir l'autre route. En parlant de ça, la jani plan de route neuf pour les résidents en avec chauffeur l'auto qui ka servir chemin Union Marisil ou chemin Grand Rivière. Pour ça là commencer le 12 en mois de mai pour chi ka faire arrangement pour 4454 mètres chemin la ka ni construction canal Walmason et pouvement pour les résidents traverser présentement c'est travailler ka adresser nettoyage canal et l'autre plus gros travail ka commencer la semaine qui va venir département pour faire ça c'est pour affaire construction chemin et l'autre projet ka conseiller les résidents et chauffeur l'auto qui durant ces activités travail projet ça là la ka ni yon de ti situation ki ka chagrine yo par exemple la poussière et des zones alors yo ka plaider et puis tout le monde pour prendre note de ça et ka remercier les résidents en avance pour patience et la comprendre et c'est comme ça notre pour trouver la mesure là on ka remercier autant pour ka garder on ka bon invitation pour je ne puis moi considérer qu'on se fait la vie mais pour cette autre nouvelle à créole à présent on ka vie pour cette channel Merci à Pearl Primus. And that brings us to the end of NTN Nightly. Join us next time at 7 p.m. with a repeat at 7 a.m. You can also catch up with us anytime on the St. Lucia Government Facebook page or YouTube channel. I am Janelle Norville.